But what I did come to do is plead to your consciousness. Each one of you <coughs> represent the five schools that are proposed to be closed. There's no need to close these schools. You can wait until the legislators make a decision in May about distributing funds back to the district. The gentleman from Bel Air said that it, like, it's a win-win for everyone. No one's losing. But the people who are losing is the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. That's who's losing. These five schools don't need to be closed. They would lose the relationship to their community and to uh, churches, <coughs> colleges that they have a relationship with. So there is a lose-lose situation, not a win-win. And it's rather insulting for uh, people to say that, you know, folks ought to be satisfied because we, you're going to be moved into a new pretty building. What about the buildings that are existing right now that have very good programs for students uh, that have been, that have graduated and have gone on to college? What about those buildings? What about the fact that these buildings would be an eyesore for the communities that they will be sitting in? What about that? So there's no win-win here for anyone. There's a lot of lose-lose for a lot of people in the communities and the neighborhoods that you're willing to make a vote on to close these schools. You don't have to rush to do this. You can wait. So I'm appealing to your consciousness as school board members who represent some of these schools that are in these neighborhoods that you're willing to close. <coughs> Please vote with your conscience, if that's possible. Thank you. Our next speaker. Um, the individual that's Hayesville, I recognize you, Mr. Schatz. Yes. Schatz? It's Schatz. Schatz? Yes, okay. ma'am. Uh, and probably because you are in my line of vision, mm -hmm. so I can very clearly see that, that you're choosing to continue to be this right. I did not raise my hands that time, this last time. Our next speaker I did. I did. is Tim Ryan. Oh, is that just right now? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
across the board for all district schools. This sounds fair and would make a shared sacrifice by all. Ideas such as this being brought up a week before the vote being made makes me think we're not quite ready to accept the current proposal. This is a basic idea that should have been brought up months ago. I think we need to slow down and explore these options like Lynn brought to our attention. Another concern is the building condition report received using the Kansas Open Directors Act. The assessment was concerns for six different schools, Ryan, Emerson, Lincoln, Muir, Payne, and Woodland. After reviewing the bulleted items in the assessment, I have to ask why are there concerns for some of these items in economic times like we're currently in. I may be concerned for, for no reason, but without being involved in the actual discussion, I have to question. And that's why I handed it out, is just so you had some of the bullets in front of you. Um, with BBF Blay with Emerson, um, page four, it's basically a balance between wants and needs right now. And a lot of these items on here I, I see are are not needs. They're, they're just wants. Uh, administrative office being too small, libraries in, inadequate, um, current square footage, uh, the, the district uh, educational standards uh, don't quite meet. Uh, I, I disagree strongly with that. That'd be equivalent to me saying that my family is only going to drive a cat. So we have to make some, we, we have to, balance these wants and needs. Uh, other concerns uh, that I had were in Lincoln. At uh, page five, it mentions replacing the children due to vandalism. That shouldn't even be on this concern. That should be an insurance item. That, that to me is something that insurance should have taken care of. Uh, the other one is, is old roofs need to be replaced. And they do age over time, but we did have a lot of hailstorms and such in the, in the past several uh, uh, years that I would have thought Sir, that would be taken care of. Our next speaker is Don Landis. <coughs> Good evening, <coughs> school board and uh, the administration. Ladies and gentlemen here tonight. As I read over your mission statement, which is very fine, I noticed that culturally responsive is something that <coughs> our school board in the USD 259 is very attuned to. And my question is about uh, are we being, are we following sustainable development? And by that I mean as outlined by the uh, International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives. And is there really a need to close existing schools that are fulfilling a mission and then building brand new ones? Is that using our resources uh, effectively? My name is Don Landis. I live in Wichita. I have for a number of years. I pay taxes here. My children are growing. My daughter is growing. But I'm concerned about the quality of life here in Wichita and as it affects those neighborhoods. As I've got to know those folks that are here tonight, and met with them, talked with them, I realize that their neighborhoods, although we may be doing something good for Wichita, we may not be doing something good for those neighborhoods. But again, let's go back. It's, PJ mentioned about being a fiscal issue. Mine is about environmental, about resources, about is this sustainable to continue to close good schools and to build brand new places. While that may be good in some areas, I think it's bad for Wichita, bad for neighborhoods, certainly bad for those folks that are most directly affected by the school district. In closing then, I say a no vote tonight is actually the yes vote for sustainable development. Thank you. Our next speaker is Russ Pataki. Um, 